and welcome back to my channel. We have a very exciting video today. It is probably my most requested video ever, and that is my wedding budget video. This took forever to make because basically we had to like give our venue like a, like not only a security deposit, but also like some additional money to front the cost of potential like over charges so like if we went over an hour extra or so on the open bar or like we ended up like getting like i don't know like more champagne or something like that like i don't even know but because of that um we had to wait until they got back to us with their final number and everything and they only did that like two weeks ago and i was in california so i wasn't able to film and make this video until now because we were waiting to see how much we went over and all that kind of stuff um, but we have the final budget. It is here. I know you guys have been waiting and I'm gonna break down every single part of it from the wedding weekend and every single detail of the wedding and what we paid for. Before I hop into the budget, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there that this wedding is not a budget wedding per se. It's definitely on the lower end of the luxury spectrum. So keep that in mind. Asher and I are really, really grateful to be at this place in our career and everything that we were able to make this happen. Um, so what worked for us might not work for everyone. Just want to put that out there. Um, we are also really, really grateful for the people in our lives that were so willing to spend money to cross an ocean for us. Like we have so much love for our friends and family. They made this experience so amazing. They never once complained. They never once like, there was no drama associated with my wedding when it came to come to Portugal. And that is just like really rare, I feel like with destination weddings. So I'm extremely grateful to our friends and family for just being so excited and so down to cross an ocean for us. And I just have to put it out there that I am so grateful to them um, because they made our dream come true. And from what I've heard, they also made some amazing memories themselves. Um, so if you have a destination wedding in mind, remember to take your guests and what they're capable of into the equation because it definitely makes an impact. Another thing I definitely want to mention is that we are being super transparent with our wedding costs. We are explaining every single detail, what everything costs, what the clothes costs, the like flowers, the everything. Um, and also how we are paying for it. Um, that's another important part. At the end of the video, I will explain how we were able to pay this. Um, and with that transparency, I just want to make sure that you guys know that this is not meant to come off as like braggy or whatever. Again, our wedding is on the lower end of the luxury spectrum and I don't want you guys to think that we're like bragging about how much we spend on a wedding. Um, that is not the case. This is purely for like educational purposes um, to help those who are planning a wedding and really want to know the true cost of it. Honestly, one of the hardest parts of wedding planning was looking on Pinterest, looking online, falling in love with something and then not knowing if that was realistic for us, if that was something that we could actually accomplish at our wedding or was it like a million dollars, you know? So this is meant to be educational, helpful. And for all the brides out there, I hope that you use this as a resource. Um, if you're planning a destination wedding in Portugal, it could also be used to like find vendors that are in your price range or even like, I don't know, like if someone's like scamming you or something, like you know what the rate is from someone else. Um, so that is the intent of this. So with our transparency, please also treat us with respect and kindness. Um, sometimes people can get really mean when it comes to talking about money stuff, whatever. So um, I hope you find this helpful and yeah, I'd really appreciate some kindness. Also, the cost of everything is all for a Lisbon, Portugal wedding. You will find that flowers or DJ or whatever, whatever vendor you're gonna use, prices will be extremely different from place to place. So this is very specific to having a Portugal destination wedding. The prices in Italy might be a lot different. The prices in France might be a lot different. If you were to try to do the same florals, the same whatever in New York, it would be a lot different. So keep that in mind with this video. So like. 
if you go to your wedding planner in New York with expecting the same flower budget for what we got, you might not get that. Um, and it also varies from vendor to vendor. So this is also very specific to the vendors we used. Um, so keep that in mind when you're watching this video. And I just like, if you're planning a wedding somewhere else in the world, like you might not get the same costs for what we got. Anyways, now let's get into the budget. I just wanna include that all of these prices are the US dollar converted from Euro at the prevailing rate of payment, including transaction fees. So I'm gonna start with the venue and catering costs. I have everything like written out on my phone. Um, Asher put together like this really cool Excel sheet. Um, and the venue and catering cost is definitely the largest part of the wedding. It is for pretty much everyone. So let's dive in. We got married at this gorgeous pink castle named Sados Pinedos in Central Portugal. The rental fee for 70 guests was $3,136. There was an additional fee for the two additional guests that attended because we had 72 people. And the fee for that was 27 per person and that came out to $55 total. The maintenance setup cleaning fees was $205. Security for seven hours at $41 an hour was $286. Additional service fees for an extra hour of service was $682. Set up the day before and day after was $222 a day. There were two days, so it came out to $443. Now for the food, we had a base food package, which was $94 per person, and we had 72 people. That included six canapes during the cocktail hour, a starter, main, and dessert during dinner, wedding cake, and an after dinner buffet with five dessert options, three cheese options, and three fruit options. That came out to $6,797. During the cocktail hour, we also had a bao bun station, which was $9 each for 72 people. And that was $640. As for drinks, we had the base beverage package, which was $55 per person, and we had 72 people. Um, that included 90 minutes of an open bar during cocktail, wine at dinner, and a two hour open bar for the party. And that was $3,991. Now, we also had food for when me and the bridesmaids were getting ready in the morning. We had a whole like buffet. So the sandwich buffet for 13 people um, at $48 each was $619. Then we also had a coffee station for four hours, which was $13 each for 13 people, which was $173. We had an extra fee for the main course because we upgraded to like a more like elite option, which was the sea bass. So that was an extra $10 on the dinner plate and that was a total cost of $722. Then we had an extra dessert fee because we also picked the fancier dessert, which was an extra $13. Yeah, and that was $902. The coffee station post dinner was $213. We had an extra hour of the open bar, which came out to $798. We also fed our staff, which was $395. Staff beverages were $70, and lunch for staff on the day of was $106. Total for venue and catering costs, we paid $20,232. Food was like absolutely amazing. Honestly, everything there was worth the cost, and like the venue and everything was stunning. I would also like to note that like our venue also offered to do like our rentals. So we could have used um, their chairs, plates, everything. I think it was included, like, I don't know if there was an additional cost or if it was an additional cost, it was a lot cheaper than what we ended up going with. But because I didn't really like the aesthetic of our venues, tablecloths, cutlery, um, dishes and everything like that, I we decided to 
rent those things from another rental company, which were definitely a little bit pricier. So that definitely affected our budget. So I guess we'll go to the rentals next because that is an area that we decided to splurge on as well that we could have maybe saved, but I really do think that like the chairs and like plates and everything like really added to the aesthetic and I wouldn't have wanted to compromise on that. Dinner chairs were $1,454. Cutlery was $943. Charger plates were $388. Ceremony chairs were $330. Sofas were $262. Rectangular tablecloths, which there were two of them, um, were 210 total. Round tablecloths were $196 total. Linen napkins were $194. The sofa was $131. Small tables were $118. The jute puff was $79. A rectangular puff was $65. A coffee table was $39. Transportation fees were $1,244. There was a cleaning fee of $113. Total, we spent $5,767 on rentals. Now let's go to the floral cost, which I think is like one of the deepest parts of this wedding. I mean, if you're looking to save in a wedding, florals are definitely the part where you can cut back on for sure. Like they don't mean that much. I don't think to guests, like again, the food, the open bar and everything like that means the most to guests and like a good DJ. But I'm really glad we got to splurge in this area because I was obsessed with our florals. And I really do think we were able to get more bang for our buck in Portugal in the floral department than we would have in New York. Um, the florals were like a fairy tale. Like I literally like, I'm, I didn't even, we didn't do a trial or anything like that for the florals. Like we just like had like a concept and like a loose sketch and sh like Decorel, our florist exceeded my expectations. Like it was on a different level. So let's go into what the floral budget got us. For the wedding ceremony, my bridal bouquet was $194. The boutonniere for the groom was free slash included. And then the bridesmaid bouquets, there were five of them, were $97 each and it came out to $485 total. The groomsmen boutonnieres were $19 each, came out to $97 total. The wedding arch, which was absolutely stunning guys, was $2,520. The aisle arrangement was $1,344. The cocktail flower arrangements were $195. The top table, so from one end of the table to another on the main table, so we had one long main table, um, that was $155 per meter, and there were seven meters, and that was $1,086. So the floral tails, which is when the flowers spill over the edge of the table, those were, $452 each and there were two of them because there were two ends to that table and that was $905 total. The centerpieces for the round tables, which was just like moss with like the flowers growing out of it, similar to the main table, was that was $420. Now the fountain decorations, because we added extra flowers to the fountain was $1,099 and the ceiling decorations of the hanging florals, this is the only fake flowers in the wedding everything else is natural real flowers but because of like logistics and we had to do the florals overnight on the ceiling those were the only fake flowers. those were three thousand and thirty seven dollars we rented some items from them as well including candles and glass tubes that was two hundred and forty one dollars for three per round table, 15 per main table, it was 27 candles total. And then tea lights, same amount as the thick candles and that was $94 total. And then transportation cost was $323. We also had an additional cost of rehearsal dinner centerpieces, 
Um, there were only three tables and each was $97 each and it was $291. And our delivery cost was $65. Total flower cost was $12,394. Again, everything was absolutely worth it. The only area that I think we might not have had to splurge in was definitely the extra flowers around the fountain. It showed up in none of my pictures. You couldn't really see it because of all the hanging florals. And that was like pretty expensive. It was like a thousand dollars. And looking back, I definitely would have not done that. But other than that, everything else with florals was 100% worth it. So now to the stationary budget. Um, so if you were looking to save on your wedding, I feel like wedding invitations are definitely a good place to maybe like not do bespoke ones, but I really, really wanted bespoke wedding invitations and I really loved ours. Like I feel like it really set the tone for our event. Um, so starting with the wedding invitations, the design fee was $230 and shipping was $105. So now let's do the breakdown of the cards. So the letterpress invitation of each card, um, there are 57 invites. So that was $328. The RSVB card was $92. The details card was $92. The vellum wrap was $60. The velvet ribbon was $113. The envelope was $95. The envelope liner was $86. The envelope printing was $51. The wax seal was $52. And the wax seal on the envelope was $45. Total invitation cost was $24 per invitation. So that came out to $1,000. $349. As for the wedding weekend stationery, the design fee was $314. The welcome drinks mirror with like a welcome message was $89. The gold metal easel to hold the mirror was $42. And the delivery and pickup was $89. For the wedding day, the ceremony programs were $314. The individual menus were $219. The place cards were $181. The table numbers were $17. Seating plan champagne wall was $514. The sip and be seated message on the champagne wall was uh, was. $47. The escort cards were $172. The guest book was $141. The guest book sign and frame was $21. The vow books were $31. Delivery and assembly fee was $261. Pickup was $157. Total stationary cost was $4,016. Again, I loved everything. Like in love, weddings was so easy to work with. Like they were amazing. Like their stationary work was amazing. They were super responsive. Like I was obsessed with working with them and their work was amazing. The only thing that I think we could have definitely axed was the champagne wall. I don't know if that was like a big thing that we really needed. Um, and looking back, like, I feel like we could have not done that or what could have been fun would have been a take a shot wall because it's pretty relevant to me and Ash's relationship because our relationship started when we took a lot of shots together. Now let's get to the audio visual. So like DJ and stuff, we went with Richie Weiss events, um, for this and yeah, um, the wedding ceremony sound system. So the sound system having someone there to control it, like a mixer um, and three microphones was $256. The cocktail sound system and mixer was $192. Dinner sound system mixer, one microphone was $192 as well. For the party, one DJ with sound system, DJ equipment, DJ cabin was $627. The dance floor flights with four structures, four LED 
projectors and light controller was $512. And the black and white dance floor that we had, which I really love because I feel like it made it feel like very elegant, was $896. And the cake cutting sparklers that we had, so we had like little fireworks on the side of us, they weren't like in the air fireworks, they were just like individual sparklers, that was $320. So total audio visual cost was $2,996. Our DJ was amazing. Like we had so much fun. Like the party was like probably one of my favorite parts of wedding. It was like the ceremony, like obviously cause it's all emotional, but we had so much fun at the party. Um, Highly, highly like recommend Rich Eyes. Next up we have photographer and videographer cost. So for photographer, we hired Love is My Favorite Color who was incredible. He made everyone feel super comfortable. Like you guys know Asher doesn't really like the camera. Neither does his friends really that much either. And he made them feel so comfortable. Um, he was just so great and amazing and he got all the best angles. I've only seen the preview so far and I cannot wait to see the full like wedding album because I know the rest are amazing. Um, but we got up to four hours of coverage at the rehearsal dinner, um, 12 hours of coverage on the wedding day, two photographers. We're gonna get an heirloom box with 30 fine art prints, 700 high resolution files, an online gallery, and we paid for the love and time put into creating these timeless memories. Um, and that came out to $5,135 for photography. Um, and it was really important for me to have a videographer. Um, I've been using these professional videos for content and like just for memories, like I'm more of a video memory person. So like I grew up like literally making like little memory videos of my friends and like posting them on YouTube so that I can always look back and like see us like moving, living, breathing. I'm just such a more video person. So having a videographer was super important to me. This is usually like a really splurge class for a lot of people, but like it was a not negotiable for me. Like I really wanted a videographer. Um, and our videographer costs includes, we have a short film, eight to 15 minutes on Blu-ray and a digital file with one videographer. And that is priced at 1,573. We added an extra videographer for $524. And then we also wanted drone footage, which was an additional cost. And that was $262. Um, total, we spent $2,360 on videography. So total photo and video spend was $7,494. Now let's go to planning where things get a little crazy um, because we actually went through three wedding planners. Um, the first one we never paid because she ghosted us before we could get that far. So like we, she sent us a proposal and we were like, yes, we definitely want to work with you. Your proposal is amazing. And we were supposed to go and tour venues with her. And a month before we were supposed to go tour venues, she like ghosted us. like. She didn't respond to our emails. The website went down. The Instagram was deleted. Um, we think that she just like went out of business or something. It was around the COVID time. Like it was like 2021 um, summertime. So like we think maybe her business just went under, but she like never like got back to us. Like it was kind of crazy, but luckily we didn't pay her. And like then she goes to us cause that would have really sucked. Um, but then we had to go with our second choice planner who I was never really a huge fan of, but Asher really liked and we wanted to give his choice a try. Um, and we ended up spending money on her despite her not being the best fit. Okay, so for our second wedding planner, um, we hired her and we made the mistake of paying her up front. Um, we paid the full wedding planning fee and for her, we were gonna do like the full wedding planning service. Um, so that included weekly consultations via WhatsApp, Skype, Zoom, in person, assistance in budgeting and breakdown as needed, discussion of theme, color, style, event design, research of industry professionals that suit our event style and budget, um, attendance at um, any vendor appointments or like venue visits or whatever, um, vis visit to both the ceremony and reception sites prior to the event, Development of detailed event timeline, floor plan, vendor, bridal party, follow-up phone calls to 
contracted vendors one to two weeks prior to the day, event rehearsal supervision, on-site coordination and supervision at the ceremony site and during the reception for up to eight hours service on your event day. Extra time is charged at a rate of $100 per hour. Um, and we ended up having to fire our wedding planner um, because she just like didn't meet any of those expectations. Like um, there were no weekly consultations because she um, did a really bad job of staying in contact with us. She would like, like literally there would be weeks that would go by where she wouldn't even answer our emails. So poor communication. She never once wanted to have a touch base about like theme and everything like that. And when we did, I did mention that she was like, oh, we could do that closer to the um, wedding. And that was like very weird because like we were already a year out and like that's like the initial like thing you have to do, come up with a concept. Um, and it says research industry professionals that go to your event style or whatever. And she had like no quality vendor recommendations and she kept pushing on us vendors who had no experience. Like when I say the florist she recommended is literally just someone with a garden in their backyard who takes pictures of flowers in their garden. I'm like not even exaggerating. Like this woman doesn't have a website, a business, and is just like a home grandma gardener. Um, and that's who she wanted to, well, there's nothing wrong with that, but like that's like not the kind of wedding florals we were looking for and we expressed that. Um, so it just like wasn't the right fit. So we did have to let her go, but unfortunately we ended up losing the $2,958 we paid up front. Um, so definitely learn from our mistakes and make sure you vet your wedding planner, make sure that it is the right fit and make sure you don't pay all up front and make sure that you have a contract before you pay up front because we got none of that money back and it was a lot. Um, so because things fell through with her and because she was such a poor communicator and she literally got nothing done. We had to literally book our venue, catering, photographer and everything ourselves at that point. So we already like half planned the wedding before we found our third and final planner who was amazing. So um, we ended up only doing partial planning with Anastasia from Dream Weddings Europe who was incredible um, because we had already booked like the venue and everything ourselves. Um, so we did the partial planning service and the styling service. So the partial planning service included private access to the wedding planning app and a lesson about how to use it, planning checklist creation, consultation about the wedding concept, style design, Pinterest board, mood board, lists of the best vendors, photo, video, florist rentals, etc., floor plan creation, wedding day timeline, Final consultation, on-site coordination by three professionals for up to 12 hours, and also includes like a few miscellaneous costs that Anastasia has to front up front. Um, and that fee was $2,716. Um, and I can confidently say she did everything on that list and more. Like she was incredible. Um, but I'll get more into that after I give you the styling services. So we also hired her for styling services, which was a more in-depth like Pinterest board creation, mood board creation, detailed styling projects, up to three changes, and pricing requests from florals and renting company, and that was $1,101. Um, again, she exceeded expectations. She was so organized, she was so communicative. She like literally like spoke to us every single week. She was on top of it, and she had such a great vision. Like our visions really aligned, and I could not have had the wedding that I had without her, and she really made my dreams come to life. And to so it was absolutely incredible. So now total cost of wedding planning, so with the second planner and the our amazing Anastasia, um, it came out to $6,775 in wedding planning costs total. Okay, so finally we have the other miscellaneous costs of the wedding. So, Let's start with the hairstylist. Um, so hairstylist, we booked Nia D'Souza. She was amazing. So for the wedding party hair, it was $50 each. There were 12 people getting ready in the morning 
and that was $600. The initial deposit was $173. The hair trial was $150. Bride hair for the welcome drinks was $100. Bride hair for the rehearsal dinner was $80. Bride hair the day of the wedding was $75 because we had put down that deposit before. And then the travel cost on the wedding day was $60. So total hair cost was $1,238. And now for makeup, we did Joanna Marrero, who was amazing. Also, like I was so happy with my hair and makeup. It was just really great. Um, the wedding day makeup for the bridesmaids and everyone was $63 per person and it came out to $925. The wedding day makeup for me and my girls total was $750 and then there was also a makeup trial that I did before that was $100 um, and then travel cost was $75. So total on makeup, we spent $925. I just wanna make a note that I did pay for all of my bridesmaids, the moms, everyone in, who got ready with us on the morning of the wedding to get their hair and makeup done. I paid for all of that for them and my bridesmaids um, did not have to pay for their dresses because they were gifted through a collaboration that I did with David's Bridal. I had a six month partnership with them. Um, that went through all the stages of the wedding planning process um and they were amazing to work with i am obsessed with them i like pitched them so hard to get that collaboration um and it was really helpful so my bridesmaids didn't really have to pay for anything on the day of the wedding because i did pay for the only cost to them which would have been the hair and makeup then we have the transportation home after the wedding so we did not get buses to bus everyone to the wedding because everyone was staying in like different places and like it was daytime so like there were tons of available ubers cabs whatever so we didn't think that was necessary but because Sintra is kind of a smaller town and it was a tuesday night we did not think that there would be enough ubers available for everyone so we decided to get shuttles buses and cars for everyone and that transportation home cost was $1,382. So we also decided to splurge on a wedding cake. So a wedding cake, a simple one with like white frosting, whatever, was included in our wedding catering costs. Um, but we wanted something a little bit more elaborate. So we went with Edelweiss cake. They did an okay job. Um, and that extra cake was $465. I was really excited about this cake and during the cake tasting, I was obsessed with the cake we were getting. It was so yummy. I was like, this is like the best splurge ever. Um, Cause I wasn't crazy about the cake flavors provided by the venue. Um, but unfortunately the day of the wedding, like they did not really consult us about this or not. Like I don't remember seeing anything about this, but like they covered like the cake in chocolate. So like it was under white frosting, but like they put a hard shell around it, I guess, to give it its shape. Um, and they didn't really consult us about this. And if they had told me about this, I would have said no. I would have preferred like a softer edge um, without the chocolate because when we cut into the cake, we for one could not cut into the cake because it was like this rock solid chocolate and they gave us like basically a butter knife. Um, two, it messed with the flavor of the cake. And I was also panicking because like chocolate is one of those things that are really iffy for me with my nut allergy. So when I cut into the cake and bit into it, I was like, oh my gosh, like, is this gonna be safe for me? Obviously it was, cause I'm alive. Um, and I didn't have an allergic reaction on my wedding day, but like it was just a little bit of an unnecessary stress. Um, and we never got to enjoy the cake because we couldn't cut into it and our venue just like never gave us a slice of cakes. So it was just like not, I, I would have went back and maybe not done that or like communicated a little bit more with, about the cake because I did not love how the cake turned out. Um, but that was only $465. Um, and then we had save the dates from Minted. We just printed them online and that was $175. And finally for our miscellaneous cost, um, we did have the welcome drinks party at Hotel Mundial, 
um, and that was like the rooftop party that everyone went to um, to welcome everyone to Portugal. And we had an open bar there of wine, beer, and sangria that was $21 per person. We had 73 people there. Um, so that was $3,092. We had an assortment of six different appetizers being passed around during the um, welcome drinks, and that was $850 for that. So total for the welcome drinks, the cost was $3,942. And that is what my parents contributed to the wedding they paid for the welcome drinks um that was their contribution so we also had a rehearsal dinner at this gorgeous villa um in sintra so the villa was the villa was actually where asher's family was staying for the wedding week um so i'm not going to include that cost into this but it's a little strange to add that because that's where they were saying and so it wasn't like they rented it out just to host um the rehearsal dinner but the rehearsal dinner was at that beautiful villa and the catering buffet was one thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars there was an also additional catering fee that was four hundred and forty four dollars table settings we had three tables um, was $520. Wait staff was $319. Chef, there were two of them, um, was $212. Transportation was $87. And logistic fee was $62. Total, um, $3,111 was spent on the rehearsal dinner. And Asher's family took care of that cost as well as like the florals for um, the rehearsal dinner because that was their contribution to the wedding. So my parents paid for the welcome party. His parents paid for the rehearsal dinner. Asher and I paid for the wedding. Um, so that's how we kind of broke that down. Okay, another miscellaneous cost is the fashion cost. Um, so these are rough numbers because like, honestly, I don't have all the receipts for everything anymore. My wedding dress was gorgeous Liz Martinez from Spina Bride. This dress cost roughly $6,000. Um, it was a custom made to order dress. Like the design was not custom, but like it was made to my measurements and it was handmade. Um, so it was $6,000 roughly. I paid roughly $1,000 to have it tailored. So to basically hem it, cause the body part was perfect, but I need to hem and bustle the dress. Um, so that was around a thousand dollars. And then you guys know the unfortunate story of how I had to pay $2,000 in taxes on this dress when I got to the, um, Portugal airport because I forgot to declare it because I didn't know I had to declare it, but I spent like $2,000 on taxes for it. So I'm going to count that because that was like not a small cost. Oh, also the dress cost also included the veil. So total dress cost was roughly $9,000 with the fees, the tailoring and the dress and veil. And then I spent $1,500 roughly on Amina Wadi shoes that broke immediately, which sucked. They were not a smart purchase on my end. I did not know that there was quality issues with Amina Wadi when I bought them. Um, but then weeks after I bought them, it started going on viral on TikTok that like, the shoes like always fall apart even though they have such a high price point. I was really sad. I look, I love the look of them and they, the embellishment fell off the first day of the wedding weekend. So that was $1,500. And then for wedding jewelry, I had a rented necklace from Versolo that was free because I had a collaboration with them. So I didn't pay for that. Wedding day earrings were also free because when I was an intern at Oscar de la Renta, they gave all of the interns a free piece of jewelry at the end of our internship. Um, it was not paid, but we did get a retail $500 earring at the end. Um, and I wore those on my wedding day. So they were like these old Oscar de la Renta earrings that I got for my internship. Um, so that was free. So no jewelry cost for me. And then I spent about $500 total. So it was like 250 and 250 for my welcome drinks dress and my rehearsal dinner dress. So total, I spent roughly $11,000 on clothes, wedding dress, all that for the wedding weekend. 
Asher spent roughly $1,040 on his wedding tux and tailoring. Um, he spent about $600 on shoes and about $600 on his wedding weekend wardrobe. Um, so his wedding weekend wardrobe cost like all, the total cost of his fashion costs was $2,240. So the total cost of the entire wedding weekend, that includes the welcome drinks, the rehearsal dinner, the wedding day, all the clothes, all the makeup, all the whatever, literally everything. The entire cost of the wedding weekend was $84,159. Now, our parents did pay for the welcome drinks and the rehearsal dinner. So that was like roughly $8,000. So the actual wedding day was $76,159. There obviously are some costs that are not even included in this number because like if you get really nitpicky about it, it can be crazy to keep track of. And we did not include our hotel for the week. Um, our like miscellaneous eating and travel costs, like our plane tickets, we didn't include that in this budget. So that is excluding how much we paid for the hotel when we were staying for a wedding, when we were staying for when we were wedding planning and when we were staying when we looked at venues because we made three trips to Portugal total. Venue hunting, wedding planning, wedding weekend. Um, so it does not include any of those costs. We just didn't think it was applicable because like, People have very different travel costs depending on where they're coming from in the world and like what hotel they try to stay in and like if they get a deal through a hotel with their venue or something like that. So like we didn't think it was like the most applicable to mention, um, but it does definitely increase the cost. I would say that it definitely pushes, probably put the wedding cost over um, $100,000 if you consider like all of the trips we made. So like that was three trips again to Portugal. Um, if you do all the plane tickets and meals and all of that. Um, but still, I feel like that's pretty solid for three European vacations and the whole wedding weekend, um, if you were gonna look at it that way. Um, but also people plan destination weddings without actually visiting the place before. So like, I, I think that it would be helpful to visit the venue before, but if you see something online, there's so many good videos and like 3D tours now, like you might not necessarily need to visit like a bunch or once even before. Um, so that's why we didn't include that. I know what you're thinking. How did a 25 and 26 year old pay for a $70,000 wedding? Cause excluding the welcome drinks and rehearsal dinner was still in the 70,000s. How do we pay for that? I. I'm not a finance person. Um, I do have insight into our finances, but I'm not the finance mastermind of this couple. Um, I'm a creative mastermind, not the finance girly, the budget girly, that's not me. Um, not a good budgeter. But Asher, he figured it out. Um, and he gave me a script because um, I asked him if he wanted to be in the video and he's like, you know, hates cameras. But he did give me a script to explain how we paid for the wedding because I also don't really have a full understanding. Um, cause that's me. I like literally you start talking about numbers and I'm like in a different world. Um, so how do we do this? Um, first of all, we've been planning this for several years. So me and Asher knew we were gonna get married pretty much from the beginning. Asher has been saving money forever. Um, I didn't even know anything about the savings account until like I don't even know until I graduated college. I was very financially illiterate. I would say still am kind of, um, but Asher has been basically like into like investing and saving and all that since he was like 18 or 17. Um, anyways, so we've been planning for several years so that we had plenty of time to save. We also had a two year engagement, which I think definitely helped. Um, our parents did pay for the welcome drinks and the rehearsal dinner, which was helpful. Really appreciative to them. Um, we both have pretty well paying jobs. Um, so Asher is an investment maker. They do make a really solid amount of money. Um, and also I make a lot of money now due to content creation. I definitely like could not have afforded what I afford now when I was in my corporate job. So I'm really happy that obviously things picked up um, for me in that way. 
Um, so we both have really good jobs and it really just came from the money from our jobs. Um, however, budgeting for a wedding is really hard. We had no idea how much some items would cost and weren't really able to anticipate some of the costs. Inevitably, we did go over budget. Our budget was 50K um, and we did go over that. Um, while we had enough cash to pay all of our vendors, we were worried about our liquidity. So Asher took out a margin loan against his stock portfolio. That sentence is where my mind goes blank. Um, I know this sounds confusing, which is why I had him write this part of the video for me, but I can explain while well, Asher is explaining in this. Basically, Asher transferred all of his money to a new brokerage account at M1. They offered much better interest rates than some more traditional brokers, and it was super easy to use. He was able to take out a loan equal to 20% of his stock portfolio and only paid 5% interest on it which is way better than a personal loan or a credit card. We never go into credit card debt because interest rates are so high on credit cards. When it came to actually making the payments to vendors, we used WISE, which allowed us to make wire transfers internationally with much lower fees than bank charges. Also, we were lucky that the US dollar appreciated so much against the Euro, so our wedding payments actually got a bit cheaper as we got closer to the date. And that is all for the finance portion of this video. If you have more specific questions, I will answer in the comments and have Asher answer them because I don't know. And also another addition to um, how we paid for the wedding is we did get wedding money from friends and family. So that definitely helped contribute to the cost of the wedding. And we are really, really, really thankful to them. Thank you guys so much. We love you to the moon and back. And yeah, that is it for this video. Um, if you guys, again, have any questions, please comment them, happy to help. Um, YouTube comments, DMs, whatever. I'm probably more likely to respond to the YouTube comments. Um, but if it's something personal, definitely like feel free to DM me. Um, I try to get through my inbox folder like once a week or whatever. Um, and I will see you in the next video, which will go over our honeymoon budget. Thank you guys for watching.